Let's talk about money, honey. Hi, my name is KK. I am not really any sort of like entrepreneur. However, I am what I call a Lisa Rinna hustler. My advice to you, don't hustle the hustler. So I've always tried to make money selling anything like my entire life. I used to sell these little purses like made out of jeans and flower crowns on Etsy like during high school. I always had like a little part-time job. I'm just like one of those people that loves to shop so therefore I love to make money. Duh. Editing Kaylin here. So just because I'm mentioning all these side hustles does not mean I endorse like crazy hustle culture. I think it's actually really cringe. Um, I wish that we lived in a world where we like didn't have to do all these things, but a lot of my side hustles bring me a lot of joy and the fact that I can make money off of them is pretty cool. So yay for making money off things you enjoy doing, boo for capitalism and hustle culture, like work until you die, never have a day off. Everyone take vacations, live, laugh, and love if possible. Don't work overtime without getting paid overtime. Always make sure to use your sick days. Anyway. That's all. I just have to add that bit. And so anywho, I just figured I would share some of my tips as a professional social media editor. I understand that not all of these will apply to everybody. Um, but I figured if you are a social media manager and curious and slash or you're interested in becoming one or some sort of influencer, keep watching. I'll also have some other general tips of like things I've done as a normal person to make money too. Um, but yeah, I'll leave if I know how to do the thing where I'll leave the chapters down below so you can click through to see what I'm talking about and how much money I've made doing each. Freelancing. Now I freelanced for the past, I'm really lucky because in my previous job, I made a client there that I got to hold on to and work with them over two years post that job. So that was really lucky. And when I say freelancing, for me specifically, it was social media management. So basically I would run this channel for a different brand company and it usually wasn't a conflict of interest because the one that I did was like very uh, different from what my job is. Hold on, I need to slow down and hydrate. Yeah, so basically if you have any sort of like skill or talent that you know people need, even if it's like something manual, I saw a friend of mine um, offering like house cleaning services. I see that as freelancing in my humble opinion. Um, I also suggest if you do this and have sort of cl clients that are paying you through 1099s, don't forget to save money for taxes because with freelancing, that's a whole other thing. Um, I always paid quarterly taxes, but you know, do what's best for you. I work with just people at H&R Block and I haven't had any trouble yet, knock on wood, but you know. So basically, again, with my advice for freelancing, there's a lot of websites you can go on to find that sort of stuff. But also I would say like open up your LinkedIn. I'll be talking about LinkedIn a lot, but if you put as one of your careers like freelance blank, people will find you and ask you for things. And this leads me to my next one, which is consulting. So kind of backpacking off of that, you can market yourself as say like an expert of whatever you kind of are. So this is all to go back and say, I had a friend of mine who was in the culinary industry and got this really, really sweet freelance gig off of LinkedIn. Like they just found her based off of all of her information. So know that people who need short term con consulting in a specific field are looking on LinkedIn. Also, that being said, you could. OK, so basically the difference between consulting and freelancing, the way I see it is that consulting is like a short term project. So I've done ones where they consulted me on their social media pages. I looked it over. I said, I like this. I don't like this. You should do this. You should do this. And those are usually like short one and done sort of things. I luckily made friends with people who work in an agency who do that sort of thing a lot. So that's why I got those deals. But again, using LinkedIn to kind of show that you are an expert in your field is a really great thing. Also with Instagram, you know, you can do the more visual aspect of this. So Honestly, the big thread throughout all of this video is just going to be like, find your niche, know what you do best and try to market that. So again, like I had a background in customer service before I started doing social media management and I was able to use those skills a lot, like to reference, you know, different things for different brands, for e-commerce, blah, 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 blah. If you have a background in photography, that's huge. If you have a background, you know, any sort of thing. Even if it's stuff like just knowledge about something that like you feel like you know more of than other people, 
do that, you know, use that to your advantage. And also with consulting and freelancing, you can use websites like Fiverr. This is not sponsored, but for full disclosure, I do. I am a full-time employee there. Hi guys, if anyone's watching from work, hi. So now actually, God, these are all just like dancing right into each other. So from freelancing and consulting, I'm gonna go to Fiverr. So backpacking off freelancing and consulting, I would take advantage of different websites. For example, Fiverr, this is not sponsored. So when I started at Fiverr, someone suggested to me that I create listings on there and I was like, okay, sure. Um, and I was thinking like, what's something funny that I know that I can do really well. And it was dating bios. So I made, oh shoot. I didn't look up how much total I've made. I'll let you know right here, how much I've made from Fiverr with the dating bios. But basically I sell dating bios and a couple other fun services. I offer to write Instagram captions and do social media marketing. I'm not, I wasn't really looking for any freelance clients and I'm still not really like for a full time gig or full part time gig. So I don't have like those kind of services listed, but for real, I would definitely take advantage of websites like Fiverr. Um, you know, I think that they're great places to make a little extra money. Now don't steal my concept and put that on Fiverr too, please. I'm not trying to like have more competition. But the next thing I want to talk about kind of like that selling things online. Let's talk about Depop and Poshmark, et cetera, et cetera. Now I've also sold things on eBay and Etsy before, but more recently I've developed um, an affinity for the fashion shopping app Depop and also Poshmark. Poshmark, I like the interface better for the seller, but Depop, Depop's like cooler. I feel like it's a lot more young Gen Z's and Poshmark's more like older Gen X's. Um, what I do is I take photos of my clothes and list them on both most likely than not with my sense of style, I've sold more on Depop, but Poshmark, I haven't, you know, it's not chump change. I made, I was so surprised over three years, I've made $995 and 15 cents from Depop and $456 from Poshmark. Now my secret with these are, if you're like me and you shop brands that kind of do limited edition runs, so like Lazy Oaf, Big Bud Press, those are constantly ones that sell out really fast. Um, I'm trying to think of other brands. Those are ones that I feel like you can try to get a fair amount of Paloma wool. That's another good one. But those are the ones where you can try to get a fair amount of money for. So like do a higher price point. However, if all you have is like, you have is like either vintage or like not name brand stuff, I would probably recommend going super cheap. I did the move where I figured out how to just make like five bucks off of it. And I sell clothes pretty quickly just doing that. Um, I also always offer free shipping, so I'll add like $5 to my total and then that's how I see it because, you know, I just feel like that's apparently psychologically people are more likely to like or buy stuff if it has free shipping. I mean, I think I'm like that. So, um, I think Poshmark takes more percentage too. If you have to choose one, I'd say Depop, but I just put on both because I feel like Poshmark also, I think, has better SEO, but again, I've sold less on Poshmark, so. Now, after Depop and Poshmark, you could also do eBay and Etsy. Those are available as well. I know Mercari is one, but I feel like that looks kind of sus. And then for other things that are even more random, Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace is kind of lit. Like, I feel like people are really on there and always trying to buy stuff. And I sold an espresso on there that broke. Oh, that was such a fail. He sent me a video of it leaking, and I was just like, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I gave him a refund, not for the shipping though, but it was such a fail. Um, and then yeah, sell any of your like unwanted house things. I have a table and a folding chair and a couple other like random shit that I wouldn't want to sell like on these big online sites cause I don't want to ship them, but I'll do Facebook marketplace. And then two other places where you can sell your clothes. One, Instagram. So using your Instagram stories, just putting them all, I usually include shipping in the cost and then just say free shipping. Um, I've sold a lot of things to my friends and I always feel a little bit weird selling clothes to my friends just cause I feel kind of like, well, if I didn't like it for a reason, like am I selling you something shitty? But that's not true, that's just me being insecure. Um, and then, yeah, so do Instagram. And then lastly, I suggest Beacon's Closet. Um, if you have those, I know Plato's Closet and the other ones are like more low budget, but in New York, um, I go to Beacon's Closet. I don't do this as much anymore since I've gotten into Depop, but what I used to do is just like load up my stuff and take it all to like, to Beacon's. I would stand in line with them, you know, 
chat, 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 compliment the people a little bit, razzle dazzle them, you know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I usually got a fair amount of money. That's usually my like last option or donating. But again, I think for the environmental impact, I prefer to resell my clothes, um, or repurpose them for some way. Um, but yeah, so with all of these two, I'm just talking about selling my clothes, but you could also sell like handmade goods. Um, I have a friend who has a jewelry business and she's been making necklaces and that's really cute. There's a big demand for them. Same with like phone cases and rings. Um, jewelry is always a good one. You know, if you have the supplies, why not make the stuff? I've been hand painting terracotta pots, but, um, oh, baby wants to come and say hi. Hold on. My baby. Look at this pretty girl. Pretty, pretty girl. You want to sit here with me? Yeah? Okay, cool. She'll just be vibing down here. The next thing is nano slash micro influencing. So this one is something that I've just started doing recently. I was lucky enough to have some agencies reach out to me about doing paid product, uh, like content for per, eh doing a paid gig that's paying me to make content for them and post it to my stories. So basically people have found that the smaller your audience, the more like likely they are to retain, like, I don't know, whatever you're trying to sell. I and I think that's why micro influencing has become such a thing. I believe it's under 10,000, but maybe it's under 20,000. And then nano influencing is under 5,000. But um, so far I've made $475, which is pretty cool. Um, but if you want to do this, there's a couple things I recommend one, like lean into a niche, right? So I really love sustainability and ethical fashion. And like, I'm definitely not perfect, but I'm like a, I want to post all my outfits. So kind of lean into your niche. And then I would recommend reaching out to brands. Like you'd be surprised if you just cold email brands and be like, Hey, I'm so-and-so do you guys work with micro influencers? You never know. And it's really not, um, it's really not, it doesn't look good for the industry anymore to send products for free in, in exchange for content, so they should pay you. I think I've been kind of lowballed if I'm being honest, but I kind of don't care because I'm like, whatever. Um, I just like mostly wanted to make the content and kind of challenge myself to see what I can do on my spare time outside of work. So yeah, I would recommend yeah doing reach out, finding micro influencer agencies, applying for those, and yeah, Best of luck. Just use hashtags. Honestly, and I've heard of stories of people taking photos with brands that they like that maybe they shop a lot and then getting gigs for that. I think the social person behind Teddy Fresh, that was her story. And I've heard of that a couple of times. So, you know, if you already love a brand and wear their stuff a lot, make content around it and post it. You'd be surprised they might want to repost you. And if you keep doing that, they might start paying you. Again, I know that this is kind of specific, but my point is that with micro-influencing, Anyone can do it. So, okay, so the next thing I recommend is using Rakuten as slash affiliate marketing. So this would be more for nano influencers. So some girls will get promo codes with their nano or micro influencing, like Parade, I think does that, and Glossier used to do that. So you can make money by using a link, by sending your audience to use a link. So if they purchase, you get a kickback. But also there's a website called Rakuten and they, you download the Chrome extension and then it will offer you certain percentages back when you shop. So you're not really like, I mean, you're still spending money. So like, just know that that's a thing. Hi, um, me again. I just realized I don't explain it very well. It's okay. Um, there is affiliate marketing. So a good example of that was when I worked at Buzzfeed, I would help write the shopping posts. I wrote like two, but still. So whenever they had a link, if you clicked that and it is disclosed, but if you click it, then a percentage of the purchase goes to BuzzFeed. So that's basically what affiliate links are. There is a, a company that's pretty dominant in the space called Rakuten. And that company actually acquired Ebates, which is now a separate thing called Rakuten.com. And you're getting your own money back from shopping, right? So it's like the, you're cutting out the BuzzFeed and you're just getting money back from shopping. So what I'm saying is use the affiliate links separately, right? Those are for your audience and then use Rakuten.com for you. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm not explaining this well, but that's the last attempt I'm going to try to make at explaining it. Thank you.
I started using Rakuten, I don't know, a couple years ago, but I have made in total $125.03 in all of my cash back. So, I mean, you know, not, not tons of money, but that is all money that would have not, like, that isn't money that I normally would have had, you know? So, try it out. Um, I know Honey can also do coupons. Again, these aren't sponsored by anything. Girl, you know that. But um, you can use Honey to save. I like to do Honey, run it for coupons, use it, save the coupon, then disable it, and then rerun Rakuten, so then I get the coin that way. Two for one, baby. Yeah. Next, I, uh, little girl is reminding me, my baby. Um, dog fluencing? Um, now I haven't made any money doing this yet, but I'm working on it. So basically I, yeah, same kind of thing. I put a post on Fiverr offering her services. Listen, she's got to start contributing to the rent baby. I can't be the only one. You know? So I put that on Fiverr, got a couple weird emails, but like nothing crazy. And then, yeah, I've gotten some reach out over Instagram, a lot of like spammy ones. So I want to try to start reaching out to the more bougie brands like Max and Bone and like the, the couture ones to see if I could... I don't know, maybe get something with that. But if you look at like a booby Billy, for example, like they have taken pet influencing to like a whole nother level. Like their stuff is so immaculate and they've like launched businesses off of it. So like if you have a cute baby, work it, you know, see what you can do. The next thing too is also like not new money. But I recommend if you have any sort of weird, like, outstanding money. So, for example, with LB's insurance, I have to take the receipts and send them in for, like, for them to invoice me back. So, that's, like, something I need to do immediately after spending money on it. But I always forget. So, then by the time I do get the refund, I'm always like, whoo! Like, I feel like it's, like, money I didn't have. But it, it is money you spent. So, I'm not saying that this is new money. But... It's a good advice, a good tip. Look for, I don't know, anything else you could possibly get like rebates for, um, I don't know, that you already had, right? So insurance is a good one, LOL, because if you don't have, or if you have it, but it didn't cover stuff, you can always like call. Again, this isn't great advice, but I'm just saying my personal experience was I always forgot to do that. So every time I finally did do that, it felt like money that I, felt like new money, yay. Okay, we are coming to a close. So here are some other ideas that I just wanted to throw your way. Blogs. I used to have a blog. You can do Google ads on there and then just sort of get residual income based off of the SEO. Not the worst thing in the world, you know? I have a friend who had a, has a blog from like way back in the day, but I think she still makes a couple, couple bucks like every month, a couple hundo, maybe lifelong. There are worse things, and that's nice because that's like money you set up and then forget about it, you know? And that I would recommend like trying to optimize SEO, search engine optimization. And, and backpacking off Google Ads YouTube channel. I'm not making any money off of this yet, but maybe someday I will, and that'll be a great like, you know, other source of income. And you gotta start somewhere, right? So going into it knowing I'm not making money, hopefully I will. Uh, baby slash dog sitting, I mean, that's pretty easy, and it, you know, a good way to make money you could put posters around your building or something like that um i have i once made a friend who would always do product test groups and i never did but you can make some pretty good money and if you're unemployed that's not the worst thing in the world because they do want kind of your time those are when a company pays you to like test a product or something like that um and yeah i don't think they're i mean just don't get yourself in like a sus situation and blame me but like try to make sure the one you're doing is legit Substack, make a newsletter I started one and I forgot about it, but maybe once I have more time, I'll get back on that. And those, I think you can make money through Google ads too. Now that concludes all of the ways I make money online. If you're new here, please like, and subscribe. And go follow me on Instagram at Kaylin Hughes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, have a great day and I'll see you next week. Bye.